Station on Channel 2. In Pakistan, the hijacking of Pan American Flight 73 comes to an end in gunfire and bloodshed. From ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. The hijacking of Pan Am Flight 73 is over, but the cost has been very high. Many passengers who were on board the plane are in shock. Many have been wounded in the final orgy of violence. And some passengers, plus two of the hijackers, have been killed. There is still such confusion in Pakistan tonight that no one is absolutely certain how many people are dead and wounded. In the reports from there tonight, the Associated Press is reporting that as many as 16 people have died. The Reuters news agency is saying seven. It appears to be clear from the overall tenor that there is more than a dozen people who are dead and we do not know how many are wounded. Some people said a few, some people at an earlier stage said as many as a hundred. But we do not know at this point, nor does the administration, nor as best we can tell, do the Pakistanis. There were almost 400 people on board for those many, many hours. And it was late at night when the end began. Here's ABC's John McKenzie. It was 10 o'clock at night in Karachi. The Pan American jet stood parked on the tarmac. Hundreds of heavily armed security forces moved to surround it. Doctors and ambulances waited nearby. Then suddenly, according to eyewitnesses, the hijackers opened fire, shooting passengers indiscriminately. The security forces stormed the plane. The shootout on the plane ended a day-long standoff on the tarmac as Pakistani officials talked to the hijackers. Pan Am Flight 73 originated in Bombay. It stopped in Karachi to refuel and was supposed to go on to Frankfurt and then New York. But here in Karachi, four men dressed in airport security uniforms and armed with automatic weapons and hand grenades stormed the plane as the last passengers were boarding. The first bus had already gone and its passengers had already gone. Our bus went up to the part where we were supposed to embark on the plane, but they closed the doors and we saw an air hostess being taken at gunpoint and we saw the crew who was jumping down. Two airport workers were shot. Later, they described what they saw. The time was about a quarter to six or six, and next to us was parked the airplane. The people were identifying their baggage, putting a cross on their baggage. Suddenly, we heard the firing from the Pan-American side. I was grazed by a bullet, which hit me on the hip, and then I passed out, and I don't know what happened. Suddenly, a bullet was shot from the American plane side, and uh, the bullet uh, hit my hand, and my fellow worker just pulled me away and took me away. Just after the initial attack, the hijackers shot one passenger, a naturalized American of Indian descent named Rajesh Kumar. He was dumped in the tarmac, carried away on a stretcher, and later died in the hospital. Later, the hijackers said they were sorry about the killing. And we saw a crew member jumping out of the plane window. And we saw him catching hold of a rope and uh, would jump out of her. Alerted by the gunfire, the three-man American flight crew left the cockpit through a hatch and slid down cables to safety. But the gunman demanded another flight crew. Pakistani officials said the gunman wanted to fly onto Cyprus to get several of their comrades released from prison there. They threatened to kill the passengers if they weren't given the pilots. You see, it is very important to make sure that they are not nervous. It's very important to make sure that they are calm and they are they're not and they have trust in you. I believe that we have established that kind of rap-off. The question left tonight is how did the situation suddenly erupt into a bloodbath? And how the hijackers were able to penetrate security at an airport which even Americans said was very safe. Until today. John McKenzie, ABC News. Well, we'll try to answer those last two questions in this broadcast. It was the middle of the night when the 747's auxiliary power, or APUs, basically ran out of energy. The sky was dark, and then the plane got dark. And that's when the panic began. Not long after it ended, we talked to one of the passengers, Daryl Piper of California. They had been carrying around in their hands. First, they had two machine guns. They had a 45 pistol. And they had, I'm not sure how many, but four or five uh, hand grenades. And suddenly, when the lights were going off, why... Uh, Two hand grenades went off in the rear of the plane and some machine gun fire was sounding in the front of the plane. And at that time, why uh, the man next to me hit the uh, escape uh, hatch chute and the slide came down and uh, 
We slid out of the plane. At least one eyewitness, Mr. Piper, has told the American consulate in Karachi that the hijackers open fire point blank on people. Are you aware of that? Uh, I'm sure that that must have happened because there's an awful lot of passengers who were walking around in the terminal afterwards that had blood on them that was not their blood. You must have been, if this is not too silly a thing to say, terrified for many minutes as the end came. Uh, it happened too fast to be terrified. Uh, I was right there at the uh, exit door and suddenly it started swinging open. The slide came down and uh, there was no time to think it was just go. You seem very much together at the moment. How did your fellow passengers react to all this? Those of us who are basically unscathed, why, uh, we all feel pretty happy now. Many others, of course, are not. Later in this broadcast, the official reaction from Washington, relief and anger. An exclusive television broadcast of the man who would be Shaw sending a message to the people of Iran. And we'll have our Person of the Week. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings, brought to you by Kellogg's Special K. If you can.